I've been wanting to tell this story for a long time, so I'm hoping that I don't fuck it up. And I say fuck all day long, so I'm just going to try not to get gratuitous with it. So, um, One of my first memories of my father is him holding a knife to my mother's throat in a kitchen when I was too young to really be able to do anything about it. And it wasn't until a couple of years ago that I knew that that was a... It came to my attention that that was a real memory. I lived with that for a long time, not knowing if that had really happened or not. Um, another one of my first memories of my father is uh, being very aware of the fact that he was a policeman and being really proud of that and telling the policeman I would see in my neighborhood that my dad was a policeman too. Uh, my dad was a cop for 40 years in New York. He worked for the Port Authority Police Department, highly decorated officer. Uh, he would tell you all about it if he was around. So I was very, uh, I grew up very confused about how I felt about my father, to say the least. And uh, in five minutes, I'm not going to be able to tell you all about that. But what I can tell you is, by the time I became a teenager, I was super fucking angry at that guy. Um, because I wanted him to be my hero, but I was afraid of him for good reason. Um, yeah. It was difficult. In the summer of 1986, I lived in New York, and if there's any uh, New England baseball fans, you'll remember 1986 and Bill Buckner. And uh, I was on the better end of that. In 1986, uh, New York had the New York Mets. Uh, I could rattle off the starting lineup of that team. I watched every game that was broadcast on WWOR TV out of Secaucus, New Jersey, with my father. And that summer and fall, was the closest that I had ever felt to that man in my life. Like, I had this reprieve. You know, it was this dream team that went on to win a World Series, um, you know, and beat your Boston Red Sox in some pretty heartbreaking fashion uh, to the extent that Bill Buckner got drummed right out of town. Um, but more than what they accomplished in terms of baseball that year, I remember a period of time where, you know, every time I was with my father, we sat down and watched a baseball game. And no matter how I felt about him, we grew closer and closer, like just watching those games and watching those guys take the field. And um, I watched so many games that year. It was, you know, all on local television. That was WWOR out of Secaucus, New Jersey. They weren't super professional. So they would catch, you know, they would catch images of these guys in the dugout fucking smoking cigarettes and shit. Like, um, Wally Backman and Keith Hernandez, who had a well-established uh, cocaine problem. Uh, you know, it was uh, not necessarily like good, clean family fun, but, you know, that was what me and my dad bonded over that summer. And uh, watched that right until the, right through the World Series. We went to a few games that year. And like I said, I mean, everything between me and him melted away. Um, after that season, we didn't have anything else like that. We had a, a lot of issues. The issues got worse. I spent long periods of time not talking to him. In my adult life, uh, I was able to kind of patch something together with him that worked. It wasn't exactly what I wanted a relationship with my father to be, but it, it worked. And we spoke. And he had a relationship with his granddaughters. Uh, I have two daughters who uh, both knew their grandfather. In 2016, shit got hard for me. I was having a hard time in my life, and I fell back into baseball. And I fell into watching the Chicago Cubs. And it was some of the best baseball I had watched in a really long time. I got really, really excited uh, about watching the playoffs, watching the Cubs go. I have no ties to Chicago, but growing up watching National League Baseball, I really held Wrigley Field in high esteem. You know, that really was baseball to me. I had traveled to Chicago. I had seen a game in Wrigley Field. I was rooting for the Cubs. Um, and more than anything, I wanted to pick up the phone and call my father and talk to him about the baseball that I was watching. But at the time, he was telling me he was going to call. Like, every time I talked to him, he would ask me what my schedule was. He's like, I'll call you. I'll call you when you're off next week. And so I was sitting around wanting to call him, thinking, well, he said he was going to call me. And so fuck him. I'm not going to pick up the phone. You know, I'm not going to call this guy. The Cubs won the World Series. I thought about calling him. I didn't. I was sitting around my house one night, and I got a call from my sister that my father had a major heart attack and died. Um, and I never got to tell him you know, what I was thinking about baseball. And I was really thinking about him. You know, I'm 44 years old. I still miss my father. You know, and what I've learned, like, as a grown man, is, like, so often, like, things aren't black and white. It's all shades of gray, you know? 
Um, I don't know. I think, you know, I don't know what kind of father I am. You know, maybe someday I'll find out. Like, what I do know is that I hope, beyond hope, that I have a summer in 1986 to share with my daughters. You know, something that special and something that kind of just transcends, you know, a moment. So, thank you.